you may or may not have noticed, I do not talk about saxophone gear a lot on this channel. The first thing you need to realize is that it's not about the saxophone gear, it's about you. You need to practice the right things on the saxophone. Yes, there are some foundational things you need to know about getting the right saxophone, the right reed, the right mouthpiece, the right ligature. And I have plenty of videos on those, but it's not as complicated as people make it seem. A lot of people are trying to tell you to get the next best mouthpiece or the next best reeds or the next best saxophone or get the oldest saxophone. This obsession with getting saxophones that are 70 years old. But the reality is, as a professional saxophone player that's been playing for 25 years, I've had the same alto saxophone and the same tenor saxophone for now over 15 years. So I've been using these instruments. I haven't updated them. I haven't tried to get a new one. They've gone through the ringer. They've toured the world. They've played in over 25 countries and I've never felt the need to upgrade them because I just found what works for me. Yes, they're professional saxophones, but a lot of people obsess over switching saxophones, trying something new, trying a new mouthpiece, trying a new reed. I've switched my mouthpiece maybe four times in the last 20 years. I just, I'm not a fan of it. It's like, I'll try a mouthpiece, and if I like it, that's what I'll use for years before I try to change it. This idea of always trying to upgrade your mouthpiece, spending hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a mouthpiece, to me, it's just overcompensating for the fact that you're not really practicing the right things and you're not sounding good because you're not putting in the time to get that full control over your instrument. There's a famous story about a great saxophone player named Charlie Parker who actually played on the worst saxophones, the worst reeds, the worst mouthpieces because he would just need the money and sell his professional gear. So he'd borrow an old saxophone and some of the greatest recordings you've ever heard from Charlie Parker were played on one of the worst saxophones you can imagine. It's not about the saxophone you're playing, it's about the player and that's where I come in. I love to teach foundational things, I love to teach the fundamentals and I really believe that mastering the fundamentals is how you get great at the saxophone. It's not about getting that five hundred dollar mouthpiece, it's not about getting that ten thousand dollar saxophone, it's not about getting that brand new type of ligature, it's about focusing on the fundamentals and practicing them every single day. But I want to know what you think about saxophone gear, whether you've been playing six months or whether you've been playing six years, what is your opinion? Do you think having a great saxophone is really important? Do you think having a great five hundred, six hundred dollar mouthpiece is important? Do you think having the best reeds is important? What is your opinion? If you ask me, the mouthpiece and reed setup is probably the most important thing and just making sure your saxophone is in good working order. That's always the problem with the saxophone is that it can get leaks, there can be springs missing, there can be problems. So just getting it fixed might be the solution to your problem with, I don't know why I don't sound good on this instrument. Well, it might be as simple as just getting a checkup, having the person see if there's leaks, having them fix the springs, the screws, and you may actually eradicate those problems that you've been having with trying to get low notes, with trying to get the octave key to work or whatever it is. So stop trying to buy brand new gear, try to work with what you have. Because the way I see it is the saxophone, the reed, the ligature, the mouthpiece setup that I have is a lot like riding a bike. It's a lot like driving a car. It takes time to get familiar with a new bike. It takes time to get familiar with a new car because you're not used to it. You're not used to the feel. You're not used to the way the gas pedal works. You're not used to the way the bike rides, how fast it goes, the gears, etc., etc. And it's just the same for the saxophone. If I keep changing mouthpiece, it's going to take me a few weeks to get Get familiar with that mouthpiece to start really sounding my best. If I get a new saxophone, it's the same problem. I'm gonna have to still work on it no matter how good it is. I'm gonna have to still practice getting familiar with the new instrument in order to sound my best. And so I'd rather stick with what works for me. I'd rather stick with what I sound best on instead of trying to constantly upgrade and blaming my gear for not sounding good. So that's just some thoughts that I have. But if you are trying to find the best mouthpiece for your level, the best reads for your level. Check out my Ultimate Saxophone Buyer's Guide. It's completely free. And I just recommend the basic things you need, the cleaning supplies, the reads you should get, the mouthpiece you should get. And if you are in the market for a saxophone, I recommend one or two different saxophones depending on your level and your budget. And you could just eradicate all that overwhelm, all that confusion about what to buy. And I just link to all the products that you should get, especially if you're a beginner and you have no idea what to buy. So I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know your opinion in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about the best reed ligature and mouthpiece setup for you as a beginner, go and check out this video next. Or you can check out my Ultimate Saxophone Buyer's Guide with the link below this video. Alright my friend, until next time, happy playing.